Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. It will help us every day. It will brighten all the way. If you keep on the sunny side of life. You know, <clears throat> hi, my name is Joe Martin. I'm the pastor at First Baptist Church in Toledo, Washington. And I was thinking about this week's um, midweek as I look forward to going into the book of, of Luke, chapter 9, as it talks about the feeding of the 5,000. I was just thinking about the God's grace for when we're ignorant at times. I'll, I'll tie that in um, this weekend, but I'm just so grateful for God's grace. And I'm especially grateful for His grace toward us when we've been ignorant. I think that's maybe what Hank Williams was thinking about when he thought about Paul's uh, conversion. I saw the light, I saw the light no more no more night Now I'm so happy No sorrow inside Praise the Lord I saw the light Well I was a fool To wander astray For straight is a gate And narrow is a way Now I have traded The wrong You know, uh, this idea of ignorance, something we all deal with. As a matter of fact, as I move through life, um, a little bit longer, um, I mean, I want to say this without trying to pull the old pull rank or say, when I was a boy, my my daddy taught me this, you know, that kind of thing. But I do want to say that at this point in my life, I have been ignorantly wrong enough, passionately wrong enough about various things, to recognize how easy it is to be swept up in the emotions of the moment, of a movement, or whatever, to be, as I said before, passionately misguided. And I also realize how easy it is. <laughs> and I'm speaking to those of you who are my, who are maybe more at this stage of life like I am. It's also easy to be, it's more tempting. It's much more tempting to just double down on your unexamined or distracting and destructive beliefs. In other words, you've never really looked at them really hard again to see if maybe you might have missed something. It's really easy to start to appeal to nostalgia or the good old days or tradition, and those kind of things will just keep you stuck. Like Jesus talked about the, the Pharisees in his day where they had taken the traditions of men and made them equal with the commands of God. So... When I begin to think about and remind myself about the things I've been wrong about, the things I've had strong opinions, maybe even um, ideas that I had kind of wrapped up in theology but really weren't really, um, as it turned out, didn't produce good fruit and they weren't really rooted strongly in Christ. They were more just the traditions of men. When I remember that, this also helps me express grace and patience toward others who are uninformed or misguided in their zeal at this point in their life. Maybe you, young people are not necessarily always young people. Paul knew what it was like to be passionately wrong. Paul knew what it was like to be violently wrong. 
As a matter of fact, he wrote to a younger man in 1 Timothy. He was trying to express this and trying to kind of guide him with his example. He says in verse 12 of 1 Timothy, I thank God, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me because he has considered me faithful in putting me into service. And then he says this, even though I was formerly a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent aggressor, Yet I was shown mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief. He didn't really believe in the Lord like he should have. He didn't believe in Jesus. He was ignorant. And then he goes on to say, And the grace of our Lord was more than abundant with faith and love without which are found in Christ Jesus. It is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners among whom I am foremost of all. <laughs> Yet for this reason I found mercy so that in me as a foremost, Jesus Christ might demonstrate his perfect patience as an example for those who believe in him for eternal life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Wow. Aren't you grateful for the grace of God when we're ignorant? We live in times where people are zealous and easily agitated on many religious, political, and cultural issues. But if you're going to be a peacemaker in times like these, you must maintain a life of inner peace. You must walk with that peace that passes all comprehension. You have to keep coming to him for that and abide in him. And this requires you to show discernment, to discern and to show patience toward people in your life and around your life who are talking and behaving in ways that, let's be honest, are ignorantly, unbeknownst to them, like Paul, Antichrist. They're just against what he stands for and what he's about and what he taught. So what can you and I do? Well, number one, the first thing is what I'm trying to do with you right now, which is to humbly recognize the danger of misguided zeal. First of all, you have to recognize it in yourself. You know, I think about it like this. If Paul could be zealous and wrong, so can you. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent aggressor, yet I was shown mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief. There is a crazy amount of mercy with God. You know, Paul killed people, you know, quoting the, the Old Testament, thinking he was serving God and country. You know, he says in Philippians 3, 6, as to zeal a persecutor of the church, as a righteousness which is in the law found blameless. He was trying to do what he thought was right. We also have to Humbly show grace and patience toward others who are misguided. Paul never forgot where he came from and what he used to think and how he used to operate. And that helped him show humility. It helped him show patience and understanding and grace toward people that are passionately wrong. For I testify about them that they are, they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. He was talking about his old pals, his, his countrymen. You know, Paul made every effort to reason and to lovingly persuade those who went. They came after him. They, you know, sometimes when people when they go harder after people who used to think like them than than people who never did. And they went after him. I mean, these people would, some of them would commit to not eat anything for until they killed them. There was all kinds of things that went, they went after them. You know, Paul would go, his practice was to go and to the Jew first and also to the Greeks. He would go and he'd try and persuade in the, in the um, temple. That didn't mean he was arguing. It meant he was persuading. He was trying to have a conversation. And that's where you get the idea of what I mentioned on Sunday or on the weekend, Romans twelve seventeen. How real is this in your life? Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. That means words, actions, whatever. 
respect what is right in the sight of all men. Certain things that everybody thinks are just good. And then if possible, and it's not always possible, but if possible, so far as depends on you, be at peace with all men. What that means is you, listen, you and I, to follow Jesus, have to do everything we can to live at peace with all men. We have to do the same. Paul taught them that, and he tried to do that. The second thing we have to do, not only do we have to humbly, um, humbly, uh, recognize the danger of misguided zeal. You got to see it. It's everywhere. I mean, there are people that are paid provocateurs. They just are getting people ramped up all the time. Secondly, you have to intentionally choose to forgive people in their ignorance. You know, God does that. You know, uh, remember Jesus hanging on the cross? Those guys are down there gambling for his clothes and eating lunch another day at, the, uh, at work. Jesus turns to the Father, doesn't have a conversation with those guards down there. Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. And they cast lots, dividing up his garments among themselves. They did not care about him at all. They didn't recognize they were on the wrong side of anything. The wrong side of God, the wrong side of history, the wrong side of eternity. <laughs> you know, you have to forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And you can say, well, the people that are hurting me and those, those people that I disagree with and those enemies that I have, they do know what they're doing. Well, they do, maybe, some. They don't understand the full capacity of what they're doing. And, you know, when you're angry, you know, you cannot help angry people if you become one of them or you stay one of them. And this is hard work, but forgiveness is the first step in lovingly sharing the gospel with anybody. It really is. You really can't love people while at the same time you're angry at them. And people say that all the time. We like that kind of... That kind of um, I would call compartmentalized thinking. I love them, but I'm just super angry and bitter at them right now. <laughs> well, remember that whole thing? Love takes no account of wrong suffered. Mm, can't do it. Not in the Bible way, anyway. So, if we're going to share the gospel of peace, we have to be at peace with God and with and others. Well, you may say what I hear said to me almost every day. I'm right. I'm right in my ideas and I am so angry at those ignorant, unintelligent people. They're just such a bunch of um, dummies. <laughs> you know, this is what we tend to do, right? We tend to think and talk about people, you know, on the TV or somebody we disagree with their religion or their politics or whatever, we always tend to talk about people we disagree with as stupid and may, probably low IQ. And of course they must be stupid because and unintelligent since if they were smart, they would think just like me, right? I think you got to go back to step one, the humility part. But it's also possible that they just don't know enough. Paul was not dumb. He just didn't know. They may not know or they haven't heard anything convincing to them other than the view that they're now hearing. And of course, this is a lot more difficult in some ways now because people are in their own echo chambers about all kinds of stuff and they just hear the same stuff played back to them all the time. You know, if you are angry, you will only fight and never ultimately reason or persuade come let us reason together says the lord let's reason let's sit down and talk about this but to do this you got to do that last thing you got to humbly accept god's grace for yourself because you're going to need him you know it takes grace for us to grow it takes grace for us to be fruitful this is the it takes grace to love the way we ought to love that's what Paul had to do. Imagine how hard it was for someone like Paul, who was so sure that he was right. And he was so sure he was on the right side and it all made sense and 
everybody supported him and he was on the right team and he was the good guy for God. And it turned out he was exactly wrong. First Timothy 1.14 And the grace of our Lord was more than abundant with the faith and love which are found in Christ Jesus. It is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners among whom I am foremost of all. Yet for this reason I found mercy so that in me the foremost Jesus Christ might demonstrate his perfect patience as an example for those who would believe in him for eternal life. He's saying, I was ignorant. I thought I was right, but I wasn't. But God's going to use that. I'm talking to you about it, he says to Timothy. And I talk about this a lot because I want to demonstrate that even Jesus, Jesus has great grace and patience for those who are ignorant when they believe in him for eternal life. You know, you can start today by maybe praying Paul's first prayer. Remember, he's on the road to Damascus. He's so zealous. He's got letters from the high priest to go to Damascus and find Christian or find Christians, Jews that had converted to Christianity that are blasphemers, and he's going to deliver them in chains. And there was a death sentence in the law for them. And he said. Who are you, Lord, when he was struck blind, when he saw that bright light on the road? He saw the Lord. And listen to, can you imagine how crushing this was? Who are you, Lord? He used the right term, Lord. And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Jesus identified with his people that were being persecuted. You're persecuting me when you persecute them. And then he told them, but get up and enter the city and I will, you will be told and it will be told you what you must do. The men traveled with him and stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. You see, once you ask that question, who are you, Lord? Who are you? And you hear from him. He will show you what the next move is in your life. So let's do that together. Let's make our community, our church at TFBC, that unexplainable community by, by doing these things of having a lot of grace with each other and even for ourselves that we would be those people that would have that humility, that willingness to be humble toward, toward God and toward one another. Remember what he said? humbly recognize the danger of your misguided zeal. You may have some right now. You have to hold that always in tension so that you don't become arrogant and too rigid. Secondly, intentionally choose to forgive the ignorant that are around you. You may end up in the process of forgiving them and being patient with them. Find out that you got a few things to learn too. And then lastly, I think it's really important that you receive that, humbly accept God's grace for yourself. Because when you see it, you too will say, who are you, Lord? And he'll say, here's what I want you to do next. Thanks for watching this. If you want to share it with somebody, you think it might help them, please do that. And then um, remember this weekend's message. And I, I just want to encourage you. Some of you are going to watch this. We've got a lot of things coming up, different camps. Of course, I'm involved a lot in man camp. It's a wilderness camp coming up in August 8th through 15th. You can find out more information about that. And also, but I want you to, I really want you to put these, to, to share these things with other people. There's lots coming up. You want to hear more about that and more about this as we go through the book of Luke. Come to either look for the, um, the weekend message or come to one of our in-person services on Sunday. Uh, 8 o'clock, 9.30 is an outdoor service, and 11. God bless you.